Done. Cool. Done. All right, so we got Brian Van Flanden, who's about to teach everybody how to properly taste whiskey. Not just whiskey, but any spirit. Thank you, Jim. Uh, any spirit. All right, everyone. Uh, I want you to go ahead and pour yourself a healthy pour. About an ounce and a half, two ounces is a proper pour. Um, and what you want to do here is this is the ideal vessel or something or a sherry flute or even a, an ISO glass. If you have a young white wine glass, uh, that's good as well. I was about to say that's a great glass up in the upper right hand corner, but that was it turns out that was a uh, me. So, you know. <laughs> um, guys, uh, so I want you to do the first thing you want to do when you're nosing a spirit uh, before after before after you've poured it, but before you smell it and taste it, first thing you want to do is hold it up to the light. Ideally, under bright white lights or with a white background. If you have a white piece of paper, that's even better. But you want to hold it up, and what you're doing is you're looking um, through it at, at the at the very edges. You'll see it's going to be lightly pale, and the middle is going to get a lot darker, a lot golden. And you want to give it a little twirl, like a glass of wine. You want to see if it's, it has any thick legs or if it's might thin and watery. Um, and you're going to see if there's any uh, any legs on there. You see those legs? So you want to get those on there as well. Now, uh, you want to. In the thicker they are, it could mean either a sign of a really high quality, oily, creamy viscosity spirit, or it could mean a cheap spirit where they're adding sugar or caramel later on after distillation. And uh, you can tell that through that through the through the taste of the, uh, by touching it and letting uh, letting the ethanol evaporate off of your fingers. And if it's tacky and sticky, you know there's sugar added to it. Now, today I'm tasting the James F.C. Hyde Sorgo uh, rye whiskey, which has uh, a high rye content, but it's made with sorghum, which is an artisanal grain. Uh, you guys all have your own whiskeys. Now we're going to nose it. Now. When you're tasting spirits professionally, and you can do this with gin, you can do this with vodka, tequila, rum, any spirit in the world. When you're nosing, this is not wine tasting. So don't jam your nose and snort, because if you do, at 40% ABV, this is 43%, yours could be very, pick up your bottle and look at the ABV. If it's 42 to 45%, you're in the zone. If it's higher than 45%, it's going to be strong. It's going to make your eyes water. So instead, you're going to breathe through your nose and your mouth simultaneously, and you're going to kind of approach it from a distance. And you're nosing from top to bottom, and there's more ethanol perceived at the top than at the bottom. But you're just getting in close enough until you start smelling something pleasant, but not so strong that the ethanol is going, you know, it's not hitting you in the face. And you're smelling, on this one, I'm smelling. I'm smelling that rye, so I'm smelling like fresh dough. Uh, I get a little bit of um, butterscotch, some toffee, creme brulee, toasted vanilla. Vanilla. Mine smells like bourbon. <laughs> I get that all the time. People, I, I do tequila tastings. People say, it smells like tequila. You get five tequilas in, you're like going, does that smell the same as the first one? They go, no way. Well, what does it smell like? So when you're looking to, for descriptors on how to smell something, what you're going to do is you're just trying to figure out what, reach into your childhood. There's no right or wrong. What does that smell like to you? What does that remind you of from yesterday or 20 years ago? Cotton candy, does it remind you of popcorn? That's very typical for a corn whiskey, for a bourbon, getting a, a, some sort of... A, 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 you know, cotton candy or, 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 or uh, buttered popcorn or anything like that. So there's no right or wrong. I mean, if you're smelling dirty gym socks, maybe there's something going wrong there. But the point <laughs> is, there's no right or wrong. So now we want to taste. Now, in order to set ourselves up for success, since this is the first whiskey of the day for most of us, I'm going to recommend, <laughs> I'm going to, Jim, I'm going to recommend that for the first taste, don't breathe through your nose. Pinch your nose. Don't, you don't have to pinch it, but just don't breathe through your nose. And what you're going to do is take a small sip, and, and just a small sip, and let that coat your entire palate. Well, don't breathe through your nose. Let it coat your whole palate. Swallow it down. And only after you've swallowed it, go ahead and exhale through your nose and your mouth. Don't force it. Just naturally exhale. So let's try that. And as you do this, Notice how sweet it is on the tip of your tongue. Okay. 
the next day. Now, first of all, not everybody drinks spirits neat, and I suspect a lot of you don't drink spirits neat regularly. Let me ask you a question. How many of you just did this? <gasps> me. <laughs> Jeff, I was watching. You didn't get the heebie-jeebies. I mean, certainly it was strong at 40%, but what we've just done by not breathing through our nose is we've allowed our palate to acclimate to the ethanol that we're about to drink. By the way, Jeff, what are you drinking? What, what, what percentage of ABV? Well, I, I just finished it, but I... <laughs> What's the ABV? This on? Colonel Taylor has been very good. <laughs> What's the alcohol by volume? Uh, I think it's a, it's bottled in bond, so it's 100 proof. So oh. proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so no I like wonder. it. I'm yeah, sad that it's gone. Good. I'm sad it's gone, but I have a little left here. Mine's 45.2 percent. At 50 percent oh, alcohol by favorite. volume, that's going to put hair on your chest. And oh, I'm shit faced already. I'm a little shit faced. But. <laughs> okay. So for the rest of us who are yeah. drinking something a little bit more manageable. Hopefully that was a pleasant experience. And now yeah. we're going to no, taste this was again. Pleasant too. We're going to taste again, but this time, now that our palate's set up, what we have is a tiny bit of palate fatigue. It's actually, um, uh, think of it this way. If you ever had a piece of death by chocolate cake, that first bite is insane. It's incredible. The second or third bite, you can't eat it because it's too cloying, it's too rich, it's too much. You usually can't finish the whole piece. Not Some people can, but not always. This is the opposite. Once we take that first sip, it's all in our face and it's really strong and we get that heebie-jeebies. But then by not breathing further our nose, we've acclimated our palate and now we can taste the spirit for how it was meant to be tasted by the master distiller. So this time, I want you to breathe through your nose and your mouth as you normally would, just casually. Don't force it. Just casually breathe through your nose and your mouth. Take a small sip, cup your tongue, take a small sip, and draw a little air over the top, okay? After you've done that, swallow it down like you normally would. And after you swallowed it, wait a beat, wait one full beat, and then casually exhale through your nose and your mouth. And as the air passes out of your lungs and over the back of your palate, the oils that are in this spirit have coated the back of your palate. You get all the great tasting notes of a great whiskey, rye, tequila, rum, any spirit. That is a big difference. Big difference, right? Big difference. Now, for the first time in your life, you don't sit down at a bar, they pour you something neat, you go like this, Ugh, and you suffer through it, and then all, and then you're just like taking small sips for the rest of the night, alternating water, sipping water, sipping to get through it, or pouring a big ice cube in there and waiting 20 minutes until it dilutes and waters down. Now you can, for the first time in your life, enjoy spirits the way they were meant to be enjoyed as the master distiller intended. And you can get all the nuances and subtles and you can order from the bar. I love to go into a bar and order three different tequilas, maybe one or two that I know well and one or two that I don't know well and just kind of sit my way through them, go back and forth and back and forth. Don't just take them all down to the tongue, go this and there and see the differences and take notes to yourself. You don't have to write it down. This doesn't have to be your new career, but what it does do is it allows you to appreciate the differences, the nuances, the complexity, the ethanol, how hot it is, whether it burns on the cheeks or not. Um, it, 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 it gives you all the, that nuance and allows you to appreciate different spirits, especially vodkas, gins, and whiskeys. But if you get into this geeky like I am, Try it with vodkas. Wow. Try three vodkas side by side. It's really cool. But in between, in between, do you like have a sip of water so you don't have the the palate changes from one to the other, or do you just go from good one questions? To the other? So here's the point: Where is the water coming from? Is it from the tap? Is it chlorinated? Is it is it, is it still water? The, it, you can use a, a bottled water that is uh, of high quality, like Hilden or something like that. Um, that doesn't have a lot of minerality, that doesn't have a lot of saline, that doesn't have a lot of, uh, of, of sodium in it. The water itself can influence how the spirits taste over time. So my personal recommendation is no. When I taste out of the same glass, I finish what I'm tasting or I dump it out, then I pour a tiny bit of whatever else I want to try into it, swirl it around, dump that out, 
and then add some more because I don't want the previous spirit to influence the new spirit that I'm tasting. Well, I, I, I don't think you mean it's going to. What about you drinking it? Like you. I, I don't think you is going to be dumping you know, out. I don't then think I take jumping twice. in. Yeah. The first sip is to acclimate my palate to the new spirit, and the second sip is to enjoy and appreciate the differences. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you should cleanse your palate with vodka. Yes. Not a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah. Not a bad idea. But, but not great. Not and great I can tell you, I, I've done this tasting with a room full of um, guests where most of them have never, ever, and don't enjoy whiskey. They tasted it, never liked it, never went back to it. And when they taste it properly, you'd be surprised how, as Brian alluded to, instead of having just like a little quick sip and then you swallow it, you drink water in between, it's horrible. And you'll never drink straight whiskey if you do that. And I say whiskey because that's, I'm a fan of it, right? But it's any spirit. When you learn how to taste it properly, you actually take, this is 100 and, um, 103 proof. Uh, that's this Blanton's bottle. And when I take a sip of this, you, you watch, it's gonna be a large sip. Which bottle is that? Oh, that, okay. That's Blanton's. Wow. He's oh, drinking yeah. the gold. That's special, dude. Jim's got connections. Jim's got connections. Because I I'm in let that sit, it, it sits on the top of your tongue. You breathe in, you breathe out, and then on that breath where you have your air coming down, and you breathe out mostly through your mouth, a little bit through your nose. Night and day difference than if I said, no different than if I said, swirl this around, don't do it because it burns. Stick your nose in the glass, close your mouth, and breathe in through your nose. You'll get a whiff of alcohol, horrible. You won't be able to you know, pick up any tasting nodes. They'll forget chocolate, vanilla, taffy, anything else. It'll smell like gasoline. It'll taste like gasoline. It'll be very gassy and fumy. You do it right, there are no fumes. But when you're drinking it, the same thing. There are no fumes, so there's no foulness. Brian, are you smoking? Who? No. Uh, it, it's legal here in Nevada, but no. Where are you we did a tequila, I did a tequila tasting in Mexico City, and by the fifth tequila, it tasted like a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> by the way, really yeah, that's my point, no harshness at all. Really great, great aged tequilas, because they re aged them and reclaimed American whiskey barrels, they're often mistaken for great whiskeys. And you wouldn't think, he's like, tequila, whiskey, no way. Happens all the time. By the way, James just took off, I'll, tell, I'll give him some, throw him some, uh, some credit. He's one of my best students because a lot of my students take the knowledge and they go, that's really interesting. It's fascinating. And they pick up little bits and pieces. James got some sort of uh, maybe a photographic memory, but he goes and repeats my lectures identically word for word. Our <laughs> man. He sells, sells the whiskey. He, he, he gets it. He got it early, on the day I met him at the Goldman Sachs event. I taught him how to balance a cocktail and he's been doing it ever since. So yeah, uh, just uh, throw that. Up. That's why I'm. Uh, by the way, I'm on the board for James F. C. Hyde. That's awesome. And in, in just a full disclosure for those who didn't know, he's coming back. He's coming back now, so we can talk about him now. Yeah, James, we, 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 Jim, we were we were bragging on you for a second. I said you're one of my best students. You always you remember everything that I tell you since the day I met you, and you've been you've been you've been lecturing on it ever since. So. That's not I actually what he's trying. That James Jimmy now. Hyde guy, he just he just keeps trying to drink, trying to make me drink James F.C. Hyde. That's all he does. That's what he really. I have a question for James. James, how did you get into your whiskey or uh, whatever you, you know? Those um, I'm actually, but I'm gonna. I think I'm okay with this. I'm not supposed to share this story. We. Um, wait, 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 wait. Do you want me to stop recording? No, we love yeah, this. Delicious. That would, <laughs> that would be great. Only because I like the job.